It's a pretty rainy and overall muggy day here at Hackberry Farm, but even though it's rainy and muggy outside, today's a good day to tinker and learn some new techniques. And what I'm working on today are hummingbirds. Over the past couple of weeks, the number of hummingbirds that have shown up on the place have really increased quite a bit. At any given time, you'll see six or eight hummingbirds out here at my feeders trying to get a sip of nectar uh, as they go on with their daily lives. And they're a real fascinating bird to watch. If you've never watched hummingbirds, it's amazing how they fly. It's amazing how they maneuver. They're not the kindest things in the world. In fact, they're mean to each other. They're real ter territorial, and so they fight each other all the time. And even though you wouldn't think that overcast days would be a good day to photograph something like hummingbirds, this is really the best day because it gives me a couple of options on how to set up my pictures. But first, let me show you my setup. I've actually got two hummingbird feeders out here, and I've got them strategically placed. You know, I love backgrounds and so one of the things i think about when i'm putting out these hummingbird feeders is how far can i get the background away from the feeder that way i get that real soft creamy out of focus background and so i've got two feeders set up i've got one out here that'll work in the sun when the sun's out to give me some good outdoor light and i've got one that hangs underneath the awning behind me and so uh, when it's under the awning that way they're always in the shade so for this first feeder you can see i've got this limb attached to the feeder they like to land on top of that and uh and a light on it and that way i can get a good shot natural shot of them sitting on something like a limb uh, before they come in to feed now i can add a piece of greenery to that or anything else to kind of liven it up a little bit and often i will do that but for now it's just a good place for them to perch before they go down to feed so for my other feeder i have it under the awning here and the reason for that is when the hummingbirds feed from it they'll be in the shade and you may be wondering why would you want them in the shade if you're trying to photograph wildlife and outdoors and the reason for that is even though the background may be illuminated by the sun if the if the birds are in the shade i can add light to it and be able to balance the light and by using an artificial light source like a flash i can burst those flash at quick durations and that'll add more stop motion to the wings now it really is a, depends on what you like me i'm not a great fan of using flash in wildlife photography i don't mind if the wings are blurred a little bit because when we're looking at the birds we can't see their wings flapping anyway they're blurred so i think the blurred wings look is a little more natural of a look but if you like that stop motion action you can bring flash in to the to the setup and be able to illuminate the birds and the only way you can do that is if they're in full sun you can't bring in enough light you can't overpower the sun but if you, if you have them in the shade you're able to bring enough light in and balance that light with the background so that way you can stop the action and then fill the light in and so let me show you my camera setup what i have here and this looks kind of exotic but it's really not i've just been collecting flashes over the few years past several years and I've got this a three flash setup. This is a bracket I found online that'll hold multiple flashes. And so by hooking this bracket to a light stand or you can use a tripod or whatever, I can put three flashes on this. And since Canon, along with Nikon and every other uh, camera manufacturer has wireless flash systems, I can set these three flashes up wirelessly. I don't have to do any kind of special settings. I just let the camera decide how much flash it needs. But the key thing is having more than one flash. And so what you're looking for is a lot of power. If I use one flash, it'll get a little bit of power, but probably not enough. It's gonna have to blast a lot of light out there to be able to, to, uh, to get correct exposure on the bird when it's a few feet away. But if I use three flashes, the flash duration can be quicker. And because that flash duration is quicker, I'm able to stop and freeze the action a lot better. So for my camera setup, and it doesn't really matter about the, what camera body you use, but I've got a 500 millimeter F4 lens mounted on a Canon R5 camera. And then on top, I have the Canon wireless flash controller. And I've had that thing for years as well. I use it on my old DSLRs, but thankfully Canon thought enough ahead to make them work with their new mirrorless camera. So I use this wireless flash controller so it communicates with the flashes on the stand wirelessly. And then the key part of this setup, I've got the one, I've got the 500 millimeter lens, I've got the 1.4 extender, but the key part of this setup is the extension tube between them. And the reason why I've got the extension tube is I'm fairly close to these birds, maybe 10, 12 feet away from them. And for this lens to focus that close, you've got to use that extension tube. If you want to learn more about using extension tubes for wildlife photography, check out my video and I'll include it in the link below about how to photograph dragonflies. So by including this extension tube between there, it makes this lens focus a whole lot closer. Other than that, my setup's pretty simple. I've got an aperture priority. I've got my aperture wide open as, as much as it can be. I've got my focus limiter set on the, on the middle part 
That way I want it to focus in that mid-range part because if it focuses all the way to infinity, it'll hunt for focus too much. So if I set my focus limiter to that middle spot, the range of focus it needs to move to, the lens needs to move to achieve focus is a lot smaller. And then it's just a matter of shooting a lot of pictures. And so what I try to do is these hummingbirds, if you, if you watch them for a while, you'll understand that they're, they're kind of creatures of habit. So they like to feed from the same hole every time. And so what I do is wait for a hummingbird to come in. And when it does, it will feed from that one hole. And a lot of times they'll back up off the feeder and hover for a second. And when they do that, that's when I try to get the picture is as soon as they start to hover. And again, depending on how you like it, you may like that stop action look with the flash. I'm not as a big a fan about that, but it looks okay. Or you may want to do static shots of them sitting on a perch, or you may just want to just enjoy them like I've been doing all day. So me taking pictures today, I've shot maybe 20 or 30 pictures. I'm not really in a big hurry to take pictures. I just kind of like being out here watching them. But if you have any questions about this setup, feel free to leave a comment in the, in the comment section below. And otherwise, I'm gonna keep taking pictures.